everyone, this is Melissa, and I'm the talkative introvert. Let's like start recording, because I literally did an episode with Shannon, and I was like, hey, how are you? Oh, is this, this what? Is that what this is? Kind of. Okay. I don't know. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Yeah? Thanks. Yeah. What's new? <sighs> any uh, Any big plans coming up? Nothing I can say on the podcast. <laughs> Could you cut that out? <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> oh, look at that. I know. I love watching the sound waves. It's all funny. Because it's like, it's it's pretty even, and then it just gets super loud, and then it's <laughs> even again. <laughs> oh, jeez. But anyway, so today, there's a specific subject you wanted to talk about, which was, uh, what is it called again? Emotional energy. Emotional energy. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so I didn't understand what that was. And I was like, yeah, sure. Let's do that. So like, can you explain what emotional energy? Um, oh boy. Oh boy. Well, based on the four TikToks that I've watched about it, <laughs> <laughs> from my understanding is that emotion, ow, emotional energy is, uh, it's the way it was. I was understanding is that it's like a limited, amount of emotion that you have on a daily basis and the way that this one person explained it is they call it fuck bucks so you only have a certain amount of fucks to give a day right yeah so every day let's say you get like a hundred fuck bucks and the it doesn't roll over to the next day is what they were explaining and and once you run out of those hundred fuck bucks, then you, then you're out, your emotional energy is depleted. Yeah. And, and then there are certain things that are, that take like more fuck bucks than other things. Like, for example, caring about what other people think or mm-hmm. dwelling on the past or trying to like obsess over the future and like what's going to happen in the future or what were the other things? I can't even remember Um, now. Living up to other people's expectations. expectations. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't remember what the other stuff is. Well, you already said most of it. There were five things that I think we listed for, so we're missing one, but that's okay. (laughs) Um, but I, and like, as I'm thinking about it now, I think that it's kind of comes with age. Like you're just like, like you have less as you get older or you have, what do you mean? Like, um, it comes with age, like learning not to give your emotional energy to shit that doesn't matter. Oh, okay. So like not caring about what other people think. Yeah. Like, cause like when I was in high school and like college, like other people's opinions, like it was an obsessive thought to me. And like, yeah. I cared so much what other people thought, like, how are they going to think about like what I look, how I talk, like yeah. what I, like my opinion on things like, but now as I'm getting older, like I just don't care. And it's Same. great. It's amazing <laughs> to not care. Yeah. Cause I feel like I was so stressed out in high school and like even in, during college and just like the, my early 20s, like I know I'm not, I'm still in my 20s, but like as I'm nearing that 30 year mark, I'm just like caring less and less about other people's like opinions, not, not, not caring about other people, but like caring about what they think. And um, like I'm, you get to the point where you're kind of just tired of also just walking on eggshells around people and caring about like if they're going to get mad at you or, or explode. And it's like, well, if they're going to do that, then maybe those aren't the people you need to be around anyways, mm-hmm. you know? Totally. Yeah. Like, my friend's group has definitely um, gotten smaller. Oh, yeah. That. I yeah. heard a saying once, and it's um, it goes, I'd rather have four qu- four quarters than a hundred pennies. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. And, like... That's a good point. I've always been like that, though. Like, I've yeah. never had, like, very many friends. I've always kept my friend circle very small and, like... Um, yeah, I mean, like, look at us, like, we're still friends and yeah. like, I can't imagine us not being friends. Like, like we're totally going to be those bitches in our seventies, <laughs> like while now, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, um, so yeah. Oh, another, 
I think the last one that we were missing is um, to not take things personally. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one, too. That I is, think I still struggle with that, though. Yeah? Yeah. That is huge for me. Like, yeah. when I was younger, like, I could not take criticism at all. Mm. If anybody tried to, like, critique me in any way, even if it was, like, a positive thing, like, I would just get completely irrationally emotional and, like, cry sometimes, like, yeah. like in dance class. And yeah. my dance teacher was like, you need to turn out more or, like, you know, you need to do this or you need to jump higher or you need to squeeze or whatever. I would just be like, oh, I didn't do it perfect the first time, <laughs> you know? And it's yeah. like, and I think, I think, I think, like, childhood trauma is a huge part of this, too. Like, because mm-hmm. when I was a kid, my parents, like, they never told me that I ever did anything wrong. Like, oh, I was okay. literally the picture of perfection in my parents' eyes. Yeah. And, like, even to this day, <laughs> like, my mom, like, she, you know, she's just so sweet and she's so supportive. And she's never, ever done anything that's, like, unkind or, like, which... Like, she's just always been very sugarcoating and, like, yeah. always provided, like, a very, very big cushion for me for when I fall, yeah. so to speak. And, um, like, my mom tried to ground me once when I was in high school and it literally lasted, like, a couple hours. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, like, and I... had a very different childhood. <laughs> yes, and, like, and, you know, that's, like, my dad died when I was young, and, like, I think my mom felt a lot of guilt about that, yeah. and then plus she was struggling with her own mental illnesses and, like, trying to parent and blah, 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 so, but not to take things personally, and, like, I think, I think in the last year, yeah, I have, like, I don't want to say grown out of that, but it just does not affect it's gotten me. better. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it's the same for me. Like it's gotten better, but I definitely struggle with that a lot. And it's, even though we pretty much kind of had like the opposite childhoods, like I don't, we, I didn't get a lot of compliments or like I didn't get a lot of that. Um, like positive reinforcement. Yeah. Like verbally, yeah. you know, that's why I like words of affirmation is pretty high for me. Mm. Cause I think I didn't have that as a kid really. Totally. Yeah. And, um, but I took things personally because I didn't want to disappoint the other person mm. rather than, I guess it's like the opposite of you, but like our parents were on like the opposite spectrum, but it's still, made us have the same problem with totally. taking things personal. Like similar results. Yeah. So that's, I don't know. It's weird because it's like, um, what was I trying to say? Positive reinforcement. Like there's a balance. Totally. Yeah. And the two extremes still make the same problem, but Mm -hmm. so you have to like kind of, as a parent, like be in the middle. Totally. Yeah. Neutral. Yeah. Um, And then how much would, how much do you think that like self-esteem and self-image and self-worth plays into taking things too personally? Oh, I mean, I think it takes, it's a huge impact on your self-esteem. Totally agree. Because it's you, you know, Mm -hmm. like you want to be better or you, or, you know, it's all about like how you're, or what am I trying to say? How do I explain that? (laughs) (laughs) Well, okay. So how would you answer that question? (laughs) I'm trying to like wrap my hand around it. Um, yes. So like. At the times where I was struggling the most when taking things too personally, that's when my self-esteem and my self-perception was at its very lowest. Yeah. And, like, for example, um, you know, when I was, like, in high school, I was very, very small (laughs) compared to now. (laughs) But I thought just the worst of my body, you know? And, like... um, yeah, and, like, I just would always compare myself, like, to other people. Yeah. And, like, I think kind of, like, growing up in the dance world, like, you just do that naturally. Like, yeah. you go to dance competitions and you're like, oh, my God, that girl's dress fits so much better. Like, she looks so much better, like, because mm-hmm. she's skinny or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, like, you know, not to say that I was, like, not to say that I was fat in high school or that I'm fat now, but it's just, like, you know... 
you're harder on yourself. Totally. Then. Totally. Yeah. And then, and being hard on myself and having low self-esteem and like having low body image or poor body image really plays into and like feeds that taking shit too personally. Yeah. And so now when you connect all of that, like that stuff is so heavy. And then when you connect it to, um, emotional energy. Yeah. It's no wonder that I, my emotions were just so all over the place, but I think that's also just being a kid and like going through hormonal yeah. changes and stuff. But even like, even like five years ago, Mm -hmm. Like, um, yeah, like I, I think it was still kind of similar, like just took things way too personally. Mm -hmm. And like, like if my coworker said things in a different tone of, or like not my coworker, but like my boss, yeah, if she said something like in a certain tone of voice, I would just completely internalize and be like, Oh my God, what does that mean? Did I do something yeah. wrong? Did I mess up? Like, did I make a mistake? Like, and that is just really draining. And it's like. The more I work on it and the more I learn to not be that way, to not mm -hmm. take things personally and to not really put too much stock into like how people are saying things in their tone of voice, like yeah. the better yeah. because it's just more free. And then you can give that emotional energy like back to yourself or put it into like positive things. Yeah. And also like, Cause I was watching this, uh, Brene Brown thing okay. and she makes a comment about like, um, the story I'm telling myself. So if your boss is having, you know, that tone of voice or like saying something negative to you, it may not be you. It could just be something they're going through, but in your head, you're like, Oh my gosh, she hates me uh -huh. or I did something wrong. But really it could be like, she's having a bad day or totally. she's just taking it out on you or whatever, uh -huh. you know? And so you have to like train your mind to remember, like you don't know what the other person is thinking or feeling totally. at the moment. And it could actually have nothing to do with you. You just were in the crossfire, unfortunately. And furthermore, <laughs> like how does all of that taking things too personally, this person talked to me in a certain tone of voice. I messed up. It has something to do with me. How does all of that relate to being self-centered and thinking that things are about you when they're really not? Yeah. Like I can say confidently, like when I was a younger person, high school, early twenties, I was very self-centered Yeah, because of that thought process thinking like, Oh, like, like, I don't know. What am I trying to say? <laughs> no, I get that. Do you know what I mean, though? Like, Yeah. Because I do think everyone has some level of narcissism. Oh, 100%. Yeah, because you, you have to care about yourself and how you portray yourself. And everyone wants to be liked, even if they don't say they do. That's just yeah. human nature. That's uh -huh. just how it is. So humans are pack animals. Yeah. And, um, and in order to be part of a pack, you have to be liked and welcomed and like people have to want you there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. God, we sound so fucking smart right now. <laughs> so smart. So smart. <laughs> I didn't even go to college, <laughs> but like, yeah. Um, and what else was I going to say? I had something I was going to touch on, but. Um, taking things personally. Well, okay. Going back to like the fuck bucks, right? Mm -hmm. What if you depleted? I love saying that. Just side side note. <laughs> okay. Fuck bucks. Yeah, I mean it makes sense, right? Yeah. I when I saw that, was that a I good, like blew my mind. Yeah, that was a good term. But so, what if you deplete yourself? Can you get it back that day, or is it once you get rid of it, that's it? Well, the way that this person was explaining it, it's like. Um, it's like, you know, you have a hundred fuck bucks a day. And once you get through those hundred fuck bucks, then you're done for the day. But you also like take into account, like everybody's different mm -hmm. and everybody has higher levels of emotional tolerance than others. Mine is very, very low. <laughs> <laughs> so what's a regular day for you then? Like on a, on a regular day, like say... A work day, like a Monday or Tuesday or whatever. Like, or do you start pretty high and then do you end really low? Or do you still have a lot left 
like by the end of the day. Yeah. Um, definitely depends on like what happens during the day. If I have a very stressful day, then yeah, like then I just come home feeling completely drained and exhausted and tired. And mind you, like I don't do any physical manual labor. I literally (laughs) just sit in an office chair all day long, but I think dealing with like what drains what I spend most of my fuck bucks on is other people's emotions. And, um, Finn. go, go on. Yes, I know. Um, so what I spend most of my fuck bucks on are other people's energy and other people's emotions. Mm. And, so that's definitely something I'm still working on because, like, why the fuck do I care if this person's in a bad mood and is being shitty to me? Well, aren't you, like, um, people-facing? So, because mm-hmm. you are front desk, aren't you? Or not anymore? Not anymore, but I still deal with the public a lot. Okay. And, um, and like, I deal with people in our organization who are very like high energy, like as far as what I mean by that is like takes a lot of energy to work with them or to mm-hmm. respond to them or to give them what they're asking for. Okay. Um, very demanding people is are like the type of people that I work with. And so, yeah, like I think like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm still learning to just not waste my fuck bucks on other people. Mm -hmm. And, like, another example of, like, wasting your fuck bucks or, like, giving away your emotional energy is, like, road rage and being Mm -hmm. in traffic and, like, somebody cuts you off and, like, almost causes an accident or, like, like, that can take a lot of emotional energy. Yeah. And what a waste, right? Yeah. But I still find myself on certain days, like, I'm just, like... I get really mad sometimes at driving because I'm like, you people don't take this shit seriously. Like, you could really kill somebody. Yeah. But, like, at the same time, like, when I give that energy away to this random driver, like, they don't know. You yeah. Know, they're not going to pick up on that energy. Like, and they wouldn't care either. Yeah. Even they're if just they going did about know. their day. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, just trying to learn to live in a space that is emotionally that is respected to my emotional energy. And like, I want to, is that Finn? No. Oh, I think it's music. Okay. Anyway. Um, what what was I saying? (laughs) I don't know. That was really distracting. I want to give my emotional, I want to save my emotional energy for myself and like my friends and like my relationships and like, um, (laughs) relationships. Who am I kidding? (laughs) Um, but like really for myself, you know, Mm -hmm. and like, and just give that back to myself instead of like coming home at the end of the day and just feeling so exhausted that I literally don't do anything. Like I don't even have energy to make dinner. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. What's your day like? And you're, and like, how does your, how do you spend your fuck bucks? I think it's pretty similar to you. Like I also work in an office and sit all day and like don't do anything really like labor intensive but it's just the people so my day depends on who I have to work with that day (laughs) like there's specific people on my list that I have to like like emotionally prepare Mm -hmm. to meet with them so I'm in meetings constantly like I have days where I'm in back to back meetings and um it just really depends who I'm with because oh man, there's just some people just like even so my manager, we have one on ones, she has one on ones with all of her people and her team. Mm-hmm. And just randomly one day she was like, So how are you doing? Like how's everything? Like, um, how's your work? Like, is work okay? Like, do you want to do something new or are you okay? Mm, yeah, nice. she's very like uh, tentative to her people. Um, and I told her, I was like, the work itself is fine. Mm-hmm. Like the, the actual work that I do is easy. It's like, it's challenging. It's, I like the work that I do. Mm-hmm. And I told her my real problem 
is the people I work with <laughs> because we do have like, I mean, hopefully no one, no one at work is listening, but there are just, there's certain people at work. It's like so frustrating to work with them. And you know who you are. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and like, I don't want to be narcissistic or like have a big head about it, but sometimes I'm just like, how did you get so far in your career? Totally. Being this way. <gasps> I know? literally think about that all the time with yeah. people at my work. And it's insane because like, I don't even have a degree in IT. Mm-hmm. You know, I studied family studies. <laughs> this has nothing to do with like computers or like technology or project management. But these people have like masters. Some have PhDs. Some are just like you PhDs, know? they have pretty huge dicks. Yeah. Um just, <laughs> just flops. flops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we could still sink. Um, <laughs> but it's just like, it's frustrating. And they take a lot of my emotional or my fuck bucks because I have to work with them. So I don't want to like piss them off. Mm-hmm. But I also need to, like, I I work a lot on how to phrase what I'm going to say. Ooh. Like sometimes I will like, write it out oh and then like send it to my manager i was like this is sound nice Mm -hmm. like if you were to read this about you would you be okay with it um because i'm trying to be not you know you gotta work with these people you gotta like talk to them every week like you don't want to be um on eggshells like there's some people at work who are just they always butt heads Mm. and it takes up so much of their energy and they're irritable and they're like, what a waste of emotional energy. Yeah. And it's like, just, you guys just have to like learn how to work together. Like how old are we? Eggs. Oh my God. How old are we? Because like the office drama is insane. Sometimes (laughs) I'm like, I'm sorry. Are we 16? (laughs) Okay. Talk about your office drama, <laughs> and then I'm going to talk about my office drama. Oh, my God. It's just like, uh... oh, did I tell you about the Christmas story? I must have told you. Uh, refresh my memory. Okay, so Christmas. <laughs> Christmas is a big deal. Like, it used to be, you know, pre-pandemic. We would, like, go, you know, all out, Christmas decorations. Everyone dresses up for Christmas. Like, People, the different departments pick a theme, right? Yeah, and like, like, well, y'all... there's contests. Like, you could, okay. you decorate in, like, this new project. They, we don't have a contest, but everyone decorates, like... Even people who don't celebrate Christmas get really into it because it's just so much fun okay. to decorate the office because it looks like a winter wonderland and there's lights and all this crazy stuff. And that does sound like fun. Yeah. And then these, but these two coworkers didn't see eye to eye on the Christmas theme. And, <laughs> and one of the coworkers, one of my coworkers, and she was like in my team, she, sent out uh, an email. She replied to an, or she replied to an email, but didn't reply to the right person. <gasps> and she replied to the person she was talking about. Oh my God. Now I remember yeah. this. And she was like, why is she so-and-so being so crazy about the Christmas decorations? Uh-oh. And then <laughs> I was on my way to work and my flip, my, cause I used to have a company phone uh-huh. and it was just blowing up. <gasps> And like, cause she's on my team, right? So I was the lead and there's the other lead. And, um, my teammate was like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, Oh geez, what do you mean? I'm so sorry. Like I'm still driving. I'm on the freeway right now. Like I'll be there soon. Oh my God. And she's like, I'm just so sorry for what you're going to come into today. <laughs> and it got so bad that the other person was like, I think we should bring this up to HR. Oh my God. And I was like, hold on, you know, <laughs> let's just take a beat. Yeah. Let's just Pop like, I like paused for a second. I was like, hold on. Let's really think about this because you <laughs> don't bring in HR unless it's like a big deal. Unless it's something that's HR related. Yeah. Cause you know, when you think, well, okay, for me, if you think HR is like sexual harassment mm-hmm. or like, you know, like a, being abusive or like verbally abusive, like something crazy mm-hmm. but i'm not gonna write 
finding porn on your work computer. Yeah, you yeah. know. But I'm not going to write. I'm not going to submit an HR form <laughs> because two people couldn't agree on the Christmas theme. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. That is just not. <laughs> that is a waste of their time. <laughs> They're just going to laugh at me. And as somebody who works in HR, I can confirm that would be a waste of time. Yeah. Thank you. And <laughs> so our director is like, okay, you guys need to sit down and apologize to each other. Oh, my God. Like, they're children. Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> these people are older than me. Okay. <laughs> One of them is ready. She's about ready to retire. That's like how much older she is than me. And I'm just like, what is happening? <laughs> what? So, yeah, that's my, that's one of the office drama. I just like mind blown. I know. So on their motorcycle. Okay, tell me yours. <laughs> okay, so here's my most recent office okay. drama. And it's all about the office plants. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh my God. So there are two people who work in my department in an office and they're like plant people. Great. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Love that for you. And they literally had 12 plants in our office, just in like the front of our office, like where our reception area is. Yeah. And they didn't, like, they watered them, but other than that, they didn't take care of them. So then we started getting a gnat infestation. Jeez. And like, like there would be times I would be talking on the phone and like they would fly into my mouth because there's just so many of them. That's nasty. And then so, so then one of my managers got involved because like she was noticing the same issues as well. Mm -hmm. And she was like, she was like, just take these fucking plants and throw them in the garbage. Here, let's put them on the cart. And myself and my coworker were just like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa let's not do that. Like, <laughs> hold on. And she's like, okay, well, at least just move them all to their desk. All oh. 13 of them or 12 or however many they were. And we're like, okay. And so we did that. Like, who is this? Your manager? Or? This was one of our managers who was okay. telling us, well, for lack of a better term, manager. Yeah. Um, was telling us, first throw them away. And then my coworker and I were like, no, 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 let's not do that. And then manager said, okay, well then just put all of them in their de on their desks. Yeah. Like in the reception area and then they can deal with it. And so we did that per manager's instructions. <laughs> yeah. And oh my God, the hellfire that was released upon us oh, when they geez. came in the next morning, they were so mad and they felt so disrespected because we had moved their office plans when Several of us had already asked them, like, hey, can you please move these somewhere else? Because they're really bothersome to us. Yeah. So first, they weren't being respectful of, like, what we were asking. Yeah. Okay, I really sound like I'm giving playing into this office drama instead of just, like, commentating <laughs> on it. But, okay, anyways, here we go. Um, <laughs> so first, they weren't being respectful of us because we were like, hey, like, can you please move these? Yeah, like, they're very bothersome. like you already asked them. Yes. And then... And then they were, then they felt disrespected by us because we moved, you moved them. <laughs> and so then there were a couple instances where people would make comments like, oh, like all the plants are up here. And they would literally be like, don't even get me started. Oh my God. And it's like, people, they're fucking plants. Bring them home. They're ugly plants. They don't even have flowers. <laughs> They're fucking peace lilies. Why don't they just bring them home? Girl, I don't know. But five of them ended up in the cafeteria. <laughs> You're just like spreading them around. All down the building. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So that's our office drama. And like, I found it, personally, I found it entertaining. So it was just fun for me to observe mm -hmm. how petty these people are and like how upset they're really getting over these plants yeah um but yeah like how do you give that much emotional energy to like being upset over office plants yeah or here's another idea get fake plants that don't even attract bugs that's another option there's just not so many yeah like you don't need that many in an office and take care of them like yeah like if you're gonna bring something in that requires care that's like a living thing 
You got to take responsibility of that. Exactly. People. I know. It's, it's insane. I don't think this really has anything to do with the topic at hand, but <laughs> it's just a fun segment. What's the most recent office drama? <laughs> You know what would be even more fun to talk about is what's the most recent family drama? But let's not go there. Oh, no. We'll talk about that off, off mic. Yeah. We'll talk about that during lunch. <laughs> um, <'Cause> I, <laughs> oh, okay. So one thing. Oh, you got some You got some piping hot tea to serve? Yeah, later. Ooh. Okay. I'm excited. Go ahead. Okay. So one thing. I remembered now what I wanted to, to okay. ask about. Okay. So narcissism, right? Ooh. Okay. Okay. So... It's kind of a thing now, and you see it a lot on social media of, like, I'm a queen. Oh, yeah. I am amazing. Self-love. Self-love. Mm-hmm. Like, like I am just amazing. You know yeah. what I mean? So they're, yeah. like, and just having a lot of stock in yourself and, like, directing a lot of your emotional energy at yourself. yourself. Yeah. And, but then there's also, like, narcissism. So, like, how much is too much? Yeah, and it seems like that's a thin line, right? Yeah. Between, like, loving yourself and empowering yourself and, like, believing the best in yourself and, like, being a narcissist. Yeah. And I, like, I, like, low-key think I'm a narcissist. Because, like, I truly believe that there is nobody in this world who is worthy of me. Yeah. I believe that. Like, and I don't know, maybe I'm just, like, still riding high off of my recent divorce but I'm just like they're like I'm never going to find anybody like as far as like a relationship or a partner goes Mm -hmm. that's going to be like worthy of me because like I know what I bring to the table and like yeah you know like well I think I mean I don't know if we want to go this I can take this out if you want to but I think it also stems from the fact that um how much you were hurt during that relationship you know, yeah. like I think now you're really truly recognizing your self worth and like who you are truly and like what you deserve. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. And so I don't know if you want to call that narcissism, but it's I guess it's more like trauma too. You know, a response to trauma. Yeah, a response yes. to trauma. Totally. Like, um, yeah. Like I mean, I don't even really know like the true definition of what narcissism is or like the characteristics of narcissism. Let's Google it. Okay. Okay. What? Okay. Narcissism. Nar. How do you spell that? Narcissus. N-A-R-C-I-S. Excessive. (coughs) (laughs) Excessive interest in or admiration of oneself and one's physical appearance. So you're, like, obsessed with yourself? Okay, but I can relate to that because I'm, like, yes. Like, I am so beautiful. Like, mm-hmm. like when I look at myself in the mirror, I'm just, like, my God, the Lord has blessed me, like, with an amazing body, an amazing face, like, an amazing personality. Like, I have it all. <laughs> but, like, so is that narcissism? I, mm. I don't know, because in a, in a way, like, you're pretty fortunate to be like that because not a lot of people feel that way about themselves. That's why I feel like it's, like, narcissistic. Yeah. I don't know. But, like, I'm not mad. But everyone's... But, like, everybody strives for, like, that type of thinking. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think when... I think it's narcissism if it gets in the way of... Like, how you talk to people or, like, like when you talk to people and, okay, so a good example is, like, you say I got, like, a new job and it's a great job and it's, like, I'm really proud of myself and I want to share that with you. And instead of you being happy for me and congratulating me, you're, like, oh, but I got this job or, like, oh, but my life is, you know, I think that's when it starts to become negative narcissism oh, you got this really amazing new job yeah well i have like fucking huge tits and a big old booty so yeah like, what's up so i think that's when <laughs> it's like bad you know <laughs> which is like saying that like i could i can't even imagine like thinking like that yeah i mean i know people like that and i would consider them as like egotistical like narcissists that's very competitive too like yeah like it's not a competition it's really not the- <gasps> The only person you're in competition with is yourself. That's right, bitch. 
<laughs> so I don't think it's negative. I think at least for you, um, cause you don't do that to like me or to like our friends where you're like, well, I'm better or like, I got this. I so. hope I don't. I don't think so. I, was you, I don't think you would be friends with me if I did. No. <laughs> I do. I mean, everyone's narcissistic <laughs> to a to a degree. Yeah, and like, I guess what we're trying to say is like that's not really a bad thing. Yeah, it's just a, it's just how you go about it. Mm-hmm. You know, like how you use your narcissism. I guess, <laughs> like, because I um, what was it? Oh, I was listening to another podcast, and they were talking about how like basically all influencers, all YouTubers, all like public facing people are narcissists. And I was thinking, like, that makes sense. Uh-huh. Like, the fact that I'm doing this podcast is narcissistic in a way because it's like, oh, I think that I'm worth listening to. Like, you guys should listen to me. And that's like a, you know. But that's necessary. Mm-hmm. Right? What do you mean? It's necessary to say, yes, I have these things I want to talk about. And I think that they are worth listening to. And I think that other people will get, will take something away from what I have to say, because you have to have that mentality if you're going to do a podcast, right? Yeah. Or else the podcast in question would not exist. Yeah. Exactly. The limit does not exist. So, <laughs> so yeah, there's some, everyone has some level of narcissism and I don't know. As long as you don't cross that line or it just becomes negative and you're just, not like putting other people down. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So what were the other things? So it was taking things too personally. Oh, okay. Here's a good one. Let's talk about this. Dwelling on the past and obsessing too much over the future. I do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which one? Past or future? Both. Okay. I think the future just because I'm a planner. Oh, sure. You know. Type like a. I, yeah. Wait, would you say you're a type A person? I'm for sure a type A <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind that I'm not a type A. Oh, okay. So sidebar, I just wanted to tell you that okay. um, because of you and like this podcast, um, one of the very first questions I ask people like on like dating apps and like yeah. I'm trying to get to know them, do you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? Do you really ask that? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And it's What really, do you get mostly? I'm um, extrovert. Okay. Yeah. And I, it's just interesting to see, to like, to... um to hear different people's responses. Some people are like, I don't even know what that means. Um, I know. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, and some people are some, this one person, he was like, I'm an extroverted introvert. So he said, I can turn it on when I need to for like work and like in oh, friend and group mm-hmm. settings. I get that. But like behind closed doors when it's just me, like that's when like, I like to just be by myself. And I was like, Yes, I can relate yeah. to that. Because I think that's so important if you're dating. Like, my, you know, MBTI says, like, I am compatible for with some extroverted people. Mm-hmm. But I would die if I, like, was dating an extroverted person. I just don't. Like, the older I get, the more of a hermit crab I become. And I just can't handle it. Like, I don't party. I used to um, think that that was a really negative thing to be, like, a hermit crab. That is my lifestyle now, and I literally have never been happier in my life. Yeah, I love it. Me too. Like, I'm, I'm home a lot. Yeah, me too. I absolutely love being just home, me and my dog, cuddling up on the couch, watching mm-hmm. a movie, or, like, painting, yeah. or, like, reading, or cleaning, or cooking, or baking. Like, yeah. I just love being here in my little oasis. It's just, like, it's just such a blessing for me to have this. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. And it's, it's good because you know, you can enjoy your time. You're not reliant on other people's energy and reliant on other people to make you happy. Like you're able to make yourself happy. And yes. That's important. Oh yeah. Well, that's the only place that happiness can come from, right? Yeah. Within. 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 Yeah. Okay. So going back to dwelling on the past and the future. So you kind of obsess over the future to an extent because you're a planner. Yeah. Okay. But I mean... I don't know. Like, I'm not really worried about the future. Mm -hmm. And the only thing, reason why I dwell on the past is because I like myself now, like my personality now and like, and my, who I was in the past, like, 
I was kind of a toxic person. I talk shit about people all the time, and I still do that. <laughs> Well, I now I'm more like selective of what I talk about, you know. Like now, I'm not... the, now the people that we talk shit on, valid as fuck, yeah, justified. Because before, like I, um, like I wasn't always overweight, you know, um, and I was like, I don't say skinny, but I was at a healthy range at least. Yeah. Um, and I remember people always talking about other people's bodies, like. Man, that person let themselves go, like stuff like that, you know? Yeah. But now that I'm older, I'm like, and like, I always just be like, well, they're probably just happy now, you know? Yeah. Or like, I try to make it more positive. Like I try not to feed into it. Like I actually say something now, but back then, and I only dwell on it because I'm like, man, the people I was around back then, or like I hung out with back then, they just know like early 20s Mia and mm-hmm. not like now Mia who's right. more who's nicer <laughs> yeah. less bitchy <laughs> but uh, less irritable yeah. yeah so that's what I do on and just like I don't know I guess like family stuff too but I think that's hard to not dwell on sometimes like our like childhood trauma mm-hmm. yeah yeah and just like random stuff like uh mainly like about my dad because we didn't really have, like, the best relationship and all that. Yeah. Uh, so I still dwell on that, especially, like, when it's, like, nearing his death anniversary or his birthday. Yeah. I also have to think about that. Um, and then he just, like, pops up every every once in a while. Yeah. But I try not to dwell on that too much because there's nothing I can do about it. Do you ever you know? have dreams about your dad? I do. Like, he visits me. But I don't like him because that's not who he was in real life. Oh, like I have like, yeah, like it's I have like really your good dreams perception of your dad or like what you wanted your dad to be. I'm sorry. Yeah. If that's like taking it too far. No, it's true. Like I, um, like I used to not like talking about my dad, uh, like, but I'm not going to hide the fact like, uh, so I was telling my mom this actually not too long ago because she was like saying like, well, how do you talk about your dad with other people? And they ask you because mm-hmm. I did have people ask me like, you know, did you miss your dad or do you miss your dad? Because he passed away mm-hmm. a couple years ago. And oh, that's hard to think that that was a couple years ago. I know. It feels well, like been, it just happened yesterday. How many years has it been now? Two years now? I think it's been two years now. 2019? Over. Yeah, it's 2021. I thought he passed in, like, 2018, 2017. 2019. So Cody and I were already married. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But Mari and Mikey hadn't had Sylvie yet, right? Right. Was she a pandemic baby? A 2020 baby? No, Mm because no. No, She was born in 2019. Yeah. Yeah. God, so much shit happened that year. Okay, it was a lot. I digress. No, it's like, um, because before I would just, like, lie to people, like, yeah. Or, you know. I mean, not that I don't miss... Uh, whatever um but <laughs> i guess now like as i'm getting older and i i see i do see a lot of my dad and myself yeah and that's really what like made me realize how much um like i'm just more accepting of who he is now mm. because he was just never meant to be a dad and so that's when i that's why i told my mom i was like you know i used to just say yeah like i missed him but now i just tell him People, like, if they do ever ask me, it's just like, well, I didn't have the greatest relationship with him, but I'm not, like, mad at him anymore. Yeah. Because that's not the role he was supposed to play. Mm. He was never meant to be a dad. And that's okay, because I don't want kids, and I think I got that from my dad, you know? (laughs) Not that he didn't want us or anything. It's just, like, some people are meant to be parents, and some people aren't. That's just how it is. And what is your mom's response to that? She was like, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Because, yeah. I mean, she knows, like, we didn't have, like, he doesn't have, like, the best relationship with his kids. It's not, you know, we weren't hiding it. It's pretty apparent. Sure. Yeah. Um, But now I just, I understand him now, like, as an adult. And mm-hmm. I accept who he is. And, um, unfortunately, he wasn't the dad, like, that you just see in TV shows. Like, he wasn't, like you know, always wasn't the parent that you needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But I just, I understand who he is and I understand like why he is the way he is. And because I'm very similar to him and I don't want kids. And what other characteristics and traits do you guys share besides not wanting kids? My dad's pretty like, he's pretty type A too. Like he has a really good work work ethic. That was like what he's really known for. And he excelled in every job that he took. Mm -hmm. Um, At least that's what I heard. Um, I don't know. (laughs) I was really young. Um, But I think we get that. And we're very like independent Mm -hmm. and strong willed. Like if we want something, we'll get it. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of that stuff. And also like. That's amazing. Yeah. And probably a little bit the narcissism. (laughs) My dad was pretty narcissistic. (laughs) <laughs> and as we've already discussed nothing wrong with that yeah you know i mean yeah i don't know why we started talking about this oh like dwelling, dwelling on the past yeah yeah and like so. thinking a lot about your dad and like yeah. the relationship that you guys had and the role that he played in your life and yeah. yeah so i do dwell on that a lot but now i'm getting older i just i understand who he is now and totally. i accept it and totally. Instead of, like, maybe being mad at him. Yeah, and, like, resenting him. Like, I'm trying not to be mad at him or resent him because that just wasn't the role he was meant to play. And he, I think he only had, like, well, he had kids the first time because he knocked up his girlfriend. But, you know, he didn't have to have four more (laughs) afterwards. (laughs) But I think that's just, like, his expectation. Like, you know, like, people back in the day, it's not so much now. But people back in the day, that's the expectation, right? You, you like finish school, yes. yeah, you get you get a job, you get the married. spouse, yeah. you get married, and you have kids. Buy house. Yeah, that's the expectation for everybody. And so I think he was just playing into that expectation rather than just really embracing who he is and accepting who he is and just being a bachelor for life. And, like, wanting to do, like, what made him happy instead yeah. of just doing what he thought he should do. Yeah. And that's what I really love about our generation. Um, <gasps> I know. Yeah. Like, the, I can't speak for the other ones, but, like, the, the millennials, like, there's a lot of negative, but there's also a lot of positive. Yeah. And that's one of the positive things is that um, we're more – about our own happiness and not just fitting into the societal norms and, you know, having a family just because that's the expectation, Mm -hmm. but rather having a family because you actually want Want to Mm -hmm. have a family. Totally. Totally. Um, How about you? Do you dwell on the past or the future? Are you more of a in the present kind of person? um, I feel like I used to never the future because we don't know what's going to happen in the future and yeah. we literally have no control over it. So yeah, you know, whatever, but the past, yeah, like a lot, um, not so much today, but so like, I feel like in the last year I have become not a completely different person, Yeah, but I have grown a lot and I think, you know, there's a lot that plays into that. Yeah. Going through a divorce, you know, finding out that my husband was, you know, had a girlfriend or whatever was going on there, talking to other girls or, you know, doing whatever he was doing and getting a divorce and then like having a complete and total, very public, psychotic, mental episode breakdown, being hospitalized being diagnosed bipolar and then finally getting on the right medications. Mm -hmm. So all of that happened in September, 2020. Yeah. That's, that was all really fast. Yeah. So a year ago. Yeah. And like in this last year, I've been put on some pretty like strong medications. And I think that that has changed a lot in me Mm -hmm. and it's just made me, I feel like a more level headed person and like, Like, my mood is more balanced now Mm -hmm. because I'm, like, literally on mood stabilizers and antidepressants. So, like, you know, I definitely don't cry as much as I used to. And, like, um, I don't get upset as much as I used to. I don't get as angry as much as I used to. And I'm definitely, like, think of others more and I'm Mm -hmm. more empathetic and sympathetic to other people um, instead of being so self-centered and just thinking that everything revolves around me and like, you know, like why me, like poor me type of thing. Yeah. So going through all of that and then 
like, as soon as I got out of the hospital, I got into, like, this really, really bad, toxic, abusive relationship Mm -hmm. with a felon. (laughs) That was fun. (laughs) Good times. Um, And then, like, he was really the true test over my husband of, like, what I deserve. Yeah. in In a partnership and in a relationship. Like, he was the lesson the yeah. biggest lesson and um you know like i so as far as dwelling on the past today in this moment no i don't dwell on the past anymore because that shit happened mm-hmm. nothing i can do to take it back only thing i can do is learn from it and like move forward with life and my friend told me this one thing one time and it's always stuck with me she said mm-hmm. It's okay to look back at the past, but it's not okay to stare. Oh. And I just love that because it's like. Because you can't do anything about it. Like, I have a box of, like, nostalgic shit from, like, my childhood, like, yeah. birthday cards. And, like, a few years ago, like, Bailey, like, three years ago. Yeah. I would go through that box all the time. Oh, really? Like, at least once or twice a month. And just look at, like, all this stuff and all the pictures and everything and just be like, God, like, why can't I just go back to this time? Yeah. And I haven't looked in that box in a really long time. And it's not because I don't care about that stuff. Like, yeah. It's definitely, like, now, if I were to go through it today, it would just be, like, more fun. Like, yeah. You know what just I mean? Just to, yeah. More celebratory instead of, like, being upset that, like, I'm That's not. That's done and it's over. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, I, I definitely know people who are, they're kind of just stuck in the past. Like, <gasps> Me too. It's like so all, sad. Yeah, like all they do is talk about the past or like yes. all they do. And it's like, well, how about now? You know, like what's what's happening now that you can't talk about or you don't want to talk about or like, and I feel really feel for those people because they're kind of just stuck in this nostalgic bubble and they can't like get out of it. Maybe that's a response to trauma. Yeah. Like they want to, they want to remember the good old days and stay there. I don't know. Yeah. I think that's a, that would take up like all your fuck fucks. If you're just like constantly stuck in the past and want to go back there and always talk about it. And I don't know. Like I like being upset that things aren't, the way they used to be. Yes. Yeah. Because I have a... Um, so I have this app that I downloaded. There's an app for that. <laughs> app for everything. Um, what's this called? Oh, Presently. Have you heard about that? No. Tell me more. Okay. So there's an app called Presently. And it's like... Um, so every day you can set a reminder. Uh-huh. And so at like for mine, I think it's like a... Um, <laughs> Um, so <laughs> it's a nice app. So you can set a reminder. So every day at nine o'clock, so like right before I get ready for bed, mm-hmm. it reminds me to write something down that I was uh, grateful for that day. Love that. Yeah. And at first I was like, this is so corny. Like, why would I do this? Whatever. And then like someone on YouTube, like just talked about, like, it sounds really small and might sound dumb, but they were like, just try it. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing it like every single night. And it's really nice because you reflect back on that day and think about like what, even if it's the tiniest thing, like something that you're grateful for, grateful for that day and something that's you know, yeah. positive that day, even if you had a really bad day. Love that. Yeah. And it's just been really nice because it makes you appreciate the present time totally. and like makes you like be in the present and be, be happy in, in the, the moment. Present. Yeah. And what a way to like, like, um, reserve your emotional energy. Yeah. Is not dwelling on the past and not obsessing over the future. And in these strange and unusual COVID times, I feel like the collective is so obsessed with the future. What's going to happen? Because they're just so over it. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of fear and like, and it's just, yeah, sad for sure. Just to see like the masses like so stressed out. Over, yeah. like, what could possibly happen in the future. Yeah. Yeah, def- it's definitely a 
trying times right now. Strange and unusual COVID times. Oh my times. god, it's so draining. Yeah, talk about like yes, like just living. Not to be like dramatic or anything, but just living in this society today is draining. Yeah. Like, especially, like, financially. Like, the cost of living is, like... Bonkers. In respect to wages and income. Mm -hmm. Like... Well, I mean, especially... I don't know how it is in other states, but California. Oh, my God. Fucking ridiculous, dude. And it's it's literally on fire. Yeah. There's no fucking water. Yeah. And Brandon... So, he has a truck, right? And so, it's, like, obviously going to take up a lot of gas because it's a truck. Yeah. But he spent, like, $105 to fill up that tank. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's fucking And he, I think he has to fill it because, you know, he drives all over. Yes. Um, for he different drives houses. a lot. So I, I think he's, like, filling up, like, more than twice a month, I think. Pretty sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And that's a big-ass tank, too. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that is so much. And, like... People are kind of upset with them, too, because uh, everything is so much more expensive now. And it's like they can't do anything about it because it has nothing to do with them. It's all about, like, you know, the prices of wood just, like, skyrocket. Yeah, I heard wood is, like, really fucking expensive Yeah, for some weird reason. Yeah. Oh, wait, maybe because, like, all the trees are being burned down by natural <laughs> fire and, like... I don't know. I mean, <laughs> this was happening before the fire, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. And, like, when the pandemic started, um, like, like even the N95 mask, because they do have to wear that um, because, you know, they're breathing in fumes dust and, and dust. And insulation. And, and, yeah. yeah. And so they need it. But then people were just going crazy and buying all the N95 masks. And so they were kind of left with nothing. And th- there's nothing really that you can use. Like, cloth masks obviously don't work. You know, you can't really use a respirator all the time. That's just like not conducive. It's just, yeah, it's just not feasible. And totally. That's insane. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm sure it's not as bad as the Great Depression, but it's pretty bad. I think the thing that makes nowadays the worst, though, is just the uh, the Internet and like media and like fear mongering and like everyone just attacking each other and like all these negative posts like it's draining when you're like if you go on social media on like a daily basis and all you see is just people being like really hateful and mean to each other yeah that's that's like like social media takes a lot of people's fuck bucks that's why i love that you can hide people or like mute people oh for sure yeah so if like someone's being way too negative i just mute them so i don't have to look at them again that's why i only go on tiktok because it's (laughs) funny yeah and it teaches us about emotional energy (laughs) <laughs> and fuck bucks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I deleted my Facebook. I mean, I have Instagram, but I just... I, mean, I have Finsta. Yeah, I... Uh, oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. There's no... Like, I don't even have a profile picture. Yeah. It's just, like... Just to scroll through stuff. Yeah, and to, like, look things up and... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I follow a lot of, like, arts and crafts yes. pages. Yes. And, yeah, mostly, like, art stuff. I really care about all the other stuff. Yeah. Same for me, but on TikTok. Yeah. Tic Tac. So what was the other thing? Um, okay, so taking things personally, dwelling on the past and the future. Uh, other living to, living up, up to, to other, other people's expectations, but not your own. I don't really think I do that anymore. Like. I don't think I've ever done that. I, like, like maybe when I was younger, like my parents' expectations. Mm-hmm. But after I moved out, and you moved out young too. Yeah, I was like after high school. Yes, and after that, I kind of just, I don't know. I think I just stopped caring about other people's expectations. I think because living in such a strict household. Mm-hmm. Um, like, very religious and strict household, the moment I got that freedom, like, just bliss. And I just Shouts stopped. kiss. Yeah. So I, I think I stopped caring at a pretty young age. My parents 
didn't have any expectations for me. They never put rules on me. Yeah. They never... They never even really cared, like, what I was doing in school and, like... But I was always just naturally, like, a very driven person and, like, yeah. I was... I always got good grades and, um, like, I always wanted to be the best. You know, that was yeah. just... So maybe that's why they never felt, like, the need to... They didn't have to really worry about that yeah. aspect of your life. Like, I was almost, like, raising myself and, like, they yeah. didn't really have to do much. <laughs> um, but... Do you think that's a good or bad thing bad. that they didn't? Bad? Yeah. Like, well, obviously my dad couldn't be involved because he died when I yeah. was 10. But, like, my mom, also not her fault because she's, you know, very, you know, she struggles with mental health, like, a lot, a lot. Yeah. Like, worse than I do. Mm-hmm. And so it's not her fault that she couldn't be there for me. And, but, yeah, it's, like, like, yeah, it's just... Like, I have a fear of, like, I deal, like, I suffer with abandonment issues, so I just have a tendency to push people away instead of just even letting them come remotely close mm-hmm. to me. That's why I have, like, so little friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I'm fine with. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, like, if I were to be a parent, I would not do what my parents did. Yeah. First of all, I wouldn't die. Thanks, Dad. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Love you, Dad. Um, but I feel like if I was a parent, like, I'd be pretty strict. Like, yeah? You think so? Yeah. But, like, I'd be very open with my kids. Like, I mm. wouldn't care if, like, my kids cussed. I wouldn't care if, like, they drank and, like, smoked weed. Like, yeah. Like, like if they're older, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Not but, like, like four-year-old with the blunt. <laughs> Exactly, but um, but I would want to be like really involved in their lives, and like I would just like this is this is one thing that my parents did, and that was just unending support. Yeah, never ending. I, I don't think unending is a word. <laughs> never ending support. Yeah, never ending. <laughs> my parents like really supported me, and like anything I wanted to do, like they were all in with me, yeah. and like if I didn't want to do it anymore. They were totally like, okay, like, no worries. And, like, that's one thing I really loved. Because I think a lot of parents just, like, force their kids to do shit that they straight up don't want to do. And I saw yeah. that a lot in dance class. Oh, there really? were Yes. There were a lot of kids in dance class who clearly didn't want to be there. Mm-hmm. And they weren't having fun. And it's like, what's the point of doing anything if you're not having fun? Like, that is my life fucking motto. If it's not fun, I'm literally not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good, I don't know. Because Brian and I have talked about it, and I think we would make really good parents. I think from what we've learned through our childhood and um, all that, which is probably what, you know, you're, you're thinking too, is like, I think I know what I would do as a parent. Like, I think I, I, I don't think I'd be super strict. Like, I'll be like, kind of strict just because yeah i've seen parents who aren't super strict Mm -hmm. and their kids are just wild and like are disrespectful like i still want that that level of filipino strictness but maybe without like the catholicism and like the religion and the church you know (laughs) yeah Um, because that's a different kind of strictness yeah but i would still want my kids to be respectful and treat people with kindness and whatever but I wouldn't be, like, on them constantly and, like, a helicopter parent or, like, not letting them do, like, anything. Like, I literally couldn't sleep over at a friend's house. Like, there was a – there. my friend had the slumber party once, and we lived in a small town um, in, like, Monterey County. And their house – we would just – walk to each other's houses that's like how close everybody lived yeah and like how small the town was and but my parents were so strict i wasn't allowed to sleep over but i went there to the party my parents picked me up at 10 or 11 or something that night and i slept in my own bed and then they dropped me off in the morning to finish the slumber party how bizarre yeah and it was literally down the street. So if something happened, my parents could literally just run to the house, you know? But that's yeah. just how strict they were. 
my first slumber party, I was 18. (laughs) (laughs) It was grad night. You didn't go to grad night, huh? No. So that was my first sleepover was grad night, and I slept over at Tatum's place. Aww. Yeah. And I was 18. (laughs) And it was, like, June also, because we graduated in June. So it wasn't even, like, at my 18th birthday. It was, like, six months later. (laughs) Oh, my God. I wouldn't be, like, that strict. Yeah, no. You know? But I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, so living up to ex- other people's expectations, don't care about that. Yeah. Not really, just like, don't do it anymore. relevant to either one of us. No. And I think that's kind of a little level of narcissism, because I'm yeah. like, I'm fine the way I am. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Like, other people's expectations don't mean shit. Yeah. It's about my expectations that I have for myself, mm-hmm. and the level of standard that I hold myself to. And, um, and I think that that is like well enough, yeah. good enough, you know, like, yeah. um, yeah. And I think that just comes with age too. Totally. It's like, why am I trying to please this person? If they don't like me, they could find another friend, Exactly. you know? And I'm not like super, um, like family to me is important, but family to me isn't blood, you Correct. know, they could be blood, obviously, but family is just, like, you choose your family. That's like, exactly how I feel, too. Like, yeah. you are more of a sister to me than my actual sister is. <gasps> I feel the same way about you. <gasps> but I also haven't spoken to my sister in, like, ten years. <laughs> so not really, like, you know, not not much to, to live up to there. Yeah. <laughs> like, the last time I saw my sister was at my dad's funeral. Yes, I remember that. And uh, what? Um, she's... What did she say to me? She said, like, she said, like, God bless you or something. Or no, it was my brother's funeral. She was like, I think she said, like, God bless you. And then I was like, "Mm mm-hmm. And then that was it. I'm like, I didn't know what to say to that. Not even a word, just a sound. Yeah. (laughs) Because what am I supposed to say to that? What does that mean? Because the way she said it, she's like, God bless you. And I'm like. Okay, you're Bless like you too. You're like you're mentally ill. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You need medication. Yeah, so <laughs> clearly you're closer to me than my sister. <laughs> <sighs> I don't even know where she lives, but I know she's here somewhere in California, in Sacramento somewhere. Oh. <laughs> I just don't know where. <laughs> she's here somewhere. Let's hope she doesn't <laughs> listen to this. Uh, yeah so people's expectations don't care yeah okay so what were the other things so there's five so expectations should we just listen to the tiktok i'm kind of like sick of trying to like figure this out okay okay here we go habits are draining your emotional energy for one overthinking about other people's opinions number two Taking um, things personally. Okay, we did that. Number one. three, expecting people to change. Oh, okay. oh we'll talk about number that. Number four, dwelling in the past or in the future. That's on that one. Number five, trying to live up to everyone else's expectations. Okay. But so wrong. the last one is just um, expecting people to change. Did we I mean, talk about number one though? Overthinking about other people's opinions. Yes, we I did. feel like yeah, we yeah. talked about that. Um, taking things too personally, expecting people to change. Okay. Um, expecting people to change. Oh, man. This is a big one for is me. Is it? Well, you yes. go then. Because I'm okay. trying to think of an example. So, obviously, the first thing that comes to mind is my ex-husband. Um, like, mm-hmm. and just him, in my opinion, I mean, this isn't even an opinion. I don't give a fuck. It's fact. He did not step up or live up to the role of being my partner. Yeah. Period. And he very, like, blatantly put his family in front of me, you Mm -hmm. know, even though he asked me to be part of his family. But so I, this was things, you know, this is what we talked about a lot in our relationship. Like, I need you to change. Like, I need you to be different. Like, Mm -hmm. I need you to do better. Like, I need you to be a better husband. And he never did, obviously. Yeah. And 
you know, definitely, I mean, if anything, it just got worse. Yeah. But, like, people aren't going to change. Yeah. They're just not going to change. They like, you either need are. to, exactly, like, mm-hmm. you either need to accept people for who they are in that moment and love them for who they are, or they're not, you know, or else you're never going to be happy with who they are. And, um, and I, but, like, at the same time, like, like, he, I feel like he just got worse, like, as our, like, relationship and marriage mm-hmm. move forward. Yeah. And, like, because we never really had any problems before we got married. Yeah. And then when we got married, everything went to shit. Yeah. So it's kind of, like, a weird, like, it's kind of, like, an anomaly. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, like, just expecting people to change. Like, people aren't going to change. People are capable of changing. I do yeah. think people are capable of changing. Mm-hmm. And, like, I can say that for myself that I've changed a lot. Yeah. Um. But never expect that of people. Yeah. I think expectations in general are just not helpful. Like, I learn, I, like, strive every, like, not to put myself on a pedestal or anything, but, like, I strive every day to live without expectations. Yeah. Like, for example, I this person said that he was going to come hang out with me tonight. Sure, he said that he wants to and that he's going to, but I'm not expecting him to. Yeah. If he does, great. That would make me, like, I that would make me happy and like we would have fun but like if he doesn't like that's okay too because i don't i really don't expect that that's going to happen yeah um like even with you like we had we planned this and we scheduled it right but like if you texted me this morning like and said hey like i just don't feel like it or i'm not feeling good Mm -hmm. or i don't want to or whatever like that's fine because like i really didn't have that expectation that like you know, like I'm expecting you, yeah, to be here. Like you're not gonna dwell on it totally. all day, yeah. And that's good. So other people like are expecting people to change. Like, yeah, people aren't going to change, and if they do, they're gonna do it on their own accord, not because you want them to. Yeah, and that's the only way people can change is if they want to change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's like a huge topic of conversation when it comes to addicts. Yeah, and um, alcoholics. It's like. Um, like, unless you acknowledge it and if you want to live your life differently Mm -hmm. and you want to stop doing drugs and drinking, like, then you're going to do that. Um, like, I think it's really hard, like, when you're so heavily addicted to things, like, you know, I'm, I'm not a drug addict and I'm not an alcoholic, so I don't really know. Like, I can't Mm -hmm. speak to that. I've been in relationships with (laughs) drug addicts and alcoholics and, um, yeah. Yeah. Never going to change unless they want to. Yeah. And only one of them did truly change. Yeah. But because he almost died. So kind of had to. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good that they changed. <laughs> <laughs> Still alive. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I don't know. Expecting people to change. I guess. Because I've really narrowed down my, my friend group. Mm-hmm. Because I don't expect people to change. And I have the friends that I have because of that, Mm -hmm. you know? So I don't think I ever really expect people to change. And I have a really low tolerance for people who need to change. Um, What do you mean? Like, I guess I just have a low tolerance for people in general. (laughs) Yeah. And so if they don't meet, that sounds, that kind of sounds narcissistic. (laughs) Like, if they don't meet a certain criteria, like, if it's, I don't know. Like, I don't ever expect anyone to change for me. Mm -hmm. Because they shouldn't. Yeah. No one should change for you. Yeah. Like, in a relationship, if you want someone to be a certain way and you think that, oh, well, you know, some like, we just need to be together longer. Or, you know, having a kid will change this person. God. I absolutely hate that. When people think that, oh, they... They're just not grown up yet, or they're just not mature yet, and it's, like, 35, <laughs> you know? It's like, honey, I don't think they're going to change anytime soon, mm-hmm. and popping out a child is not going to change that person either. And what's scary is, like, you know a lot of people like that, huh? Yeah, people... And you know what's so fucked up is that they're just thinking about themselves, and they're they're 
boyfriend who doesn't want to change and who's Mm -hmm. immature, they're not even thinking about the person that they're creating. Yeah. Who's going to have to live in this world for 80 fucking years. Yeah. Like, uh, let's not get into kids. We'll get too heated. (laughs) We'll piss a lot of people off and your, your follower count will go way down. (laughs) It'll plummet. But, um, but people shouldn't expect people to change in their relationship. Like if you're not happy with who they are now, then you're probably most likely not going to be happy in this relationship, you know, especially like if you've been in a long-term relationship and the person has yet to change and you're just waiting for that person to change, like they're not going to change, you know, Uh, maybe if they want to, but most likely not. Yeah, definitely. And you shouldn't have to want that for that person Yeah, because it's clear that like they, they're, you're not, just not meant to be together. Like, if you're expecting someone to change, then maybe you should end. Or, oh, I don't say that to people. Oh, oh. But, like, <laughs> say it. But do it. <laughs> but just maybe, like, take a step back and think about are you guys meant to be together? Are you guys good for each other? Yeah. Do you guys both bring out the positives for you. Like my major barometer for allowing people to be part of my life Mm -hmm. is who, what type of like, what do they bring out in me? Yeah. What do they bring out in me? And like, like if somebody brings out a negative side in me, what What are you looking at dudes? If somebody brings out a negative side in me, like I just, um, I just don't want to be around that person and I'll never hang out or see them or I'll, not that I'll never see them again, but like, I'll never hang out with them again. Yeah. Like, um, but if somebody brings out a good side of me, then like that's somebody I keep around. And I don't know, do you experience that? Like, do certain people bring out certain sides of you? Cause I also, yeah, absolutely. Like I yeah, struggle absolutely. with borderline personality disorder yeah. too. And like, so basically what that means is that like, I have very many different sides to like my personality and it can be kind of unpredictable about like, who am I going to be for that day? Which Mm -hmm. sounds like really weird and crazy because it is. I think that's normal though. Yeah. People. Yeah. I think people, cause everyone brings out a certain type of energy, you know, like how, like, you know how, when you're like with Casey, it's always very like high energy, high energy. Like, yeah. Yeah. You're, like, ready to tackle the day. Yes. But there's some people who just bring you down. And you don't want to, like, do anything or um, they just make you upset and, like, negative and irritable. Like, I think that's completely normal. Oh, good. I'm not alone. Okay, good. No. There's definitely – that's why I have a low tolerance for people, <laughs> like, for certain people because I don't want that. I don't want to be around someone who's just going to bring me down. And it's going to, like, bring out the worst sides yeah. of your personality. And it's okay, like, every once in a while if that person's just having a bad day and you just want to be there for that person. Mm-hmm. But if that's the constant mm-hmm. and that every time you see that person, you just know that's going to happen. Yeah. I just, why bother with that person? Like, why be around that person? What a waste Unless of emotional have energy. Yeah. Don't spend your fuck bucks on somebody like that. Yeah. But, like, back to the relationship, like... Because I know some people who hate their ex because they became a better person afterwards. Like, you know how, like, yeah, so you know those people, right? Like, they were together and their I'm boyfriend. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I mean, like, their boyfriend or spouse or whoever yes. was, like, a terrible husband and all this bad stuff. But then when they are with this new person, they're all of a sudden a great dad or a great mom or, like, a great partner. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and they hate them. But... Uh, because they were expecting them to be that way with them. But yeah. They weren't. And so, but instead of being mad at them, you kind of have to like, think about like, well, you just weren't the right person for that person. Exactly. And that they just needed to find the right person and that you need to just right find the right person that brings that out of you. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and yeah. like, man, like, I love Taylor Swift, you know this, <laughs> yeah. but she's so right when she says it's either going to be forever or it's going to crash and burn. Yeah. When it comes to every, at least like romantic relationship, mm-hmm. um, that's really how it is. It's either, this is going to be forever or it's going to crash and burn. Yeah. And like, that's such a mind blowing concept to me. Like, 
that's like, those are high stakes, Mm -hmm. you know, which is why like the more I think about being single, just the more happy I become (laughs) because like, yeah, I just don't even want to deal with somebody else and like the drama. It's hard. But but then I get lonely (laughs) and, um, you know, sometimes you just need a little TLC. They really have to be worth it. Like, I don't know if I want to be in a relationship after Brandon, if he like, you know, gets into some like tragic accident, dies. Cause it's a lot of work in that person, whoever that person ends up being has to be worth it because no one is perfect. And the flaws have to be something that you're willing to live with for the rest of your life, you know? Um, and I don't know. Relationships are hard. Yeah. There's a lot of compromise. There's yeah. a lot of like give and take. And um, it's not about just you. You have to always take in the other person's perspective and opinions and feelings and stuff. And yeah, that's, that's rough to do. Like, I mm-hmm. think we're very, like, I'm very fortunate to find Brandon because we are pretty similar and the things that make us different, I think make each other better not worse, you know? And just the fact that you guys have grown together in mm-hmm. the same direction. Yeah. Cause I've seen people who were together for a long time, but like are on different levels or different phases of their life. Mm-hmm. And that's what tore them apart. Mm-hmm. But we were able to like grow up together. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And so. that's like what makes your relationship so great. Yeah. And that's really rare to find. And I don't know if I can ever find that again. That's why I'm just like, I'll just be like a crazy dog lady after Brandon, if that ever happens or, you know, it's too much work. And then I, I don't know if I can trust another person because I, you know, Brandon can't be some secret double agent because I've known him since he was like 15, you know? Yeah. Like I don't to like have to relearn or have to change my life for another person. That's hard. Yeah. No. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. Too much. Too much. That's it. I'm Too much done. output, not enough input. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're dishing out more than what you're getting back. Exactly. Yeah. Um, as a single person, this conversation makes me extremely depressed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Single by choice. Single by choice. I broke up with my last two boyfriends and I divorced my husband. So definitely single by choice. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm fine with. Yeah. Because you know what you want. And I don't think anyone should settle for less than what they deserve. No, that's a complete waste of life. And like, like that is, it's such a genera- generational thing too with millennials. It's like, we're not going to settle for a life that does not make us happy. Mm-hmm. And when we look at people who are older than us, people in their fifties and their sixties, like, like ev- almost every single person I know who is in their fifties and their sixties is not happy with how their life is. And like either their husband is a deadbeat and like, doesn't do anything to help with the house or the kids or, you know, like one of them is cheating or like, you know, like, or, you know, people are just so set in their ways, but millennials and Gen Zers are just very open-minded. I think in my, well, I think they care about their happiness more nowadays yeah. because, um, and that's just going to lead to a better quality of life. Like, how could you not mm-hmm. want that? Like, I think that's why religion's kind of, like going down the drain a little bit, you know, because like, especially like the Catholic church, for example, I don't know, like other, I like, can't speak for other religions. Um, but like divorce isn't a thing, you know, like once you're married, you're, you're tied by the word of God and you can't like, you're not supposed to get a divorce. And it's like, even if you're really unhappy with that person, if you're like a devout Catholic or whatever religion you are, like you're just going to stick through it because that's your belief. And you don't want to go to hell or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So like your husband can beat you, you know, your husband can cheat on you. Your wife can cheat on you. 
you're gonna stay married because that's what God so wants. Yeah, you're bounded by. I've never that. been into religion ever. Like, yeah. it, like literally, like it just. I mean, well, not that I'm not. I'm not into like organized religion. I definitely believe in a higher power, and yeah. I definitely believe like I pray all the time, mm-hmm. and like you know, like I say aloud like what I'm grateful for, and like and mm-hmm. you know, like like I definitely have a relationship with God yeah, or this higher power. That's yeah. like a God, some God that's like God's. guiding me yeah. through. Right. Mm-hmm. Like when I was going through like my whole mental psychotic breakdown, cause that literally lasted from like a long time. Mm-hmm. I want to say like most of 2020, I was kind of like in that mode. Yeah. And, um, I just remember like repeating obsessively God, give me strength and guidance. Give me strength and guidance. Give me strength and guidance. And like, I really feel that way. Like I am strong now and I have like a direction that my life is going Mm -hmm. and like, I'm very happy and like, and I love the way my life is right now. Yeah. And like, like, I feel like I got those things right when I didn't have them before. Yeah. So you know, take that for what it is, but like, yeah, there's just so many hypocrisies and like organized religion and it's just really sad. And Mm -hmm. like, especially with like, you know, the discrimination against people of color and like gay people and Mm -hmm. transgender people, like it's just awful. Yeah. And I think a lot of churches are kind of getting out of that. Totally. But but they are they still... doing it? My question is, are they doing that out of sincerity or are they doing that because they notice that like the belief in organized religion and um, the participation in organized religion is decreasing? That's a good point. Yeah. I think it's also because it's just a younger generation coming into the church yes. and changing things and... um. So I think it is kind of in a way, but regardless of them accepting other people in, that are like in their normal cohort, I think an- another problem with organized religion or just religion in general is that your happiness comes second, you know, mm-hmm. cause it's all about like following the rules and making sure that, you know, you follow whatever your church's rules are. And so even like with the whole divorce thing, even if you're unhappy, you just, you don't get a divorce because that's not your, in your belief system. And um, some churches like don't even recognize you as a church member if you get a divorce. Yeah. Like there's this, uh, so the church I used to be a part of, there's this couple and they have like kids and everything, um, but they're separated. They don't even live in the same house or anything, but they never officially got a formal divorce mm-hmm. because it's against that church. And, and so like, even if they have the opportunity to find their one true love or whatever mm-hmm. and really be in a happy relationship, like the, the word of the Bible, the rules of the Bible trumps that, you know? So that's why I'm saying like your happiness comes second to the Bible or whatever you decide to like, you know, whatever your church reads or whatever or follows. Um, okay. So you might want to edit this out, but whatever. I'm going to tell you because it's hella funny. Okay. <laughs> so I saw this TikTok and it said, what is one thing that's not in the Bible, but everybody thinks is in the Bible? Oh, okay. White people. <laughs> Oh, I guess that's true, huh? Because everything was in the Middle East. I didn't think about that. Yeah. I kind of want to do an episode on, like, religion. Um, Because I'm... I know, like, at the beginning of my podcast, I was like, I'm not going to talk about anything controversial, blah, blah, blah. Oh, but that's what makes it good. I know. <laughs> and I was talking to Brandon the other day. I think it was yesterday, actually. <laughs> that, like, because there's a lot of things I don't post on social media. Uh-huh. Like, I don't post my opinions or share my opinions on anything or, yeah. like, because I do differ a lot from the people that's around me and whatever. I can relate hard to that. But at the same time, like I'm so tired 
of walking around eggshells and like not being truly me and being allowed to express myself. And it's like, what's the point of this podcast if I'm not going to express my true opinions? If you're going like, to censor yourself. Yeah. And I'm anti-censorship. Amen, baby. Yeah. Like, the censorship that's going on in this country is insane. Yes. Insane. So, I don't know. Yeah. If you so, think about it. Like, I do kind of want to do an episode. Like, I want to... I just don't have any friends who grew up in the church, mm-hmm. yeah. like my current friends, and who left the church. What about Courtney? I haven't even talked to her in a long time. She, I bet you should be down to have a conversation with you. Isn't she still part of the church, though? No. Oh, she's not? I don't think so. And if she is a part of the church, it's being a different way than when she was growing up. I'm just going to hit her up and be like, hey, so I have this podcast now. Yeah. That's what, like, having a podcast is. It's like... You can talk about all these different things and, like, you bring in, like, people who know about the topic that you're discussing Mm -hmm. and, like, who can weigh in and, like, and reconnecting with old people and, like, or not old people, but, like, like, people from your past. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, No disrespect to our elders. Love you. Yeah. I just would like to get a perspective from someone else who left their church because there's definitely a lot of positives Growing up in the church, like, I did learn a lot of, like, how to be respectful and Mm -hmm. kind and how to be humble. And, Mm -hmm. like, there's a lot of good things, like, morale-wise that you are taught in the church. Yeah. But there's also a lot of, obviously, a lot of negative, too, which, I mean, obviously, because I left, you know. (laughs) If it wasn't (laughs) negative, I wouldn't have left. You should try to find somebody to get on the podcast who was part of the Mormon church and left. I don't know anything about Mormons other than they have like Mormon underwear. I don't know if that's true. I just, they're sacred clothing. Yeah. Okay. So fun story. So my mom super, she's like, she's just crazy, (laughs) but like funny. Okay. Like fun, crazy. Yeah. Um, she likes to self medicate with wine. That's Mm -hmm. okay. She won't, she won't ever listen to this. It's okay. But, um, (laughs) love you mom. Um, so my, mom's brother my uncle married a woman who was mormon yeah she is mormon and um so she so then he you know joined that faith i believe and like they raised their kids in the faith and like all that good stuff and so my aunt used to wear sacred clothing under all of her clothes Mm -hmm. and um my mom would literally like pull up her shirt oh and like God. pull down her shirt like in front of her boobs and be like, "Let me see your sacred clothing." Oh and, my God! And my aunt would be like, "Kelly, stop!" <laughs> so yeah, that just made me think of that. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> your mom. I know. God love her. <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah, I don't know anyone from the Mormon Church, and I don't really know. Other than, like, John Smith? Wasn't he the one that... Who? Isn't he the From one Pope that... From <laughs> Oh, maybe it's the wrong name. <laughs> Isn't the creed or, like, the founder of the Mormon church name is John Smith? Jedediah Smith? Is that his name? I don't know. No, it's not... Okay, now I gotta Google it. Who's the founder of the Mormon church? I thought it was John Smith. Or is that too, like, too basic of a name? No, it's it's a very, like... Founder of Mormonism. Joseph Smith. Joseph wow, Smith. Oh, you were close. I knew it was some, like, basic name. Oh, see, I was thinking of Brigham Young. Who's that? Brigham Young was an American religious leader, political politician, and colonizer. He was the second president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, so the Mormon Church. Yeah. Oh, so he was the second president. I guess the first president is um, Joseph Smith. Yeah, president is, like, the... Like the Pope? Yeah. Okay. The founder is Joseph Smith. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if anyone that's Mormon wants to... I mean, I doubt I have Mormon listeners. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. That's true. I don't know who listens former to Former members of the Mormon church. Oh, yeah. Former members. I guess that's, that's more like my crowd. <laughs> you know, former church members of anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be really interesting. Yeah. I don't think that you should shy away from topics that are controversial. Yeah. Because. And it's a good conversation. 
And that plays into other people's opinions. Yeah. Who fucking cares if they don't like what you're saying? If they don't like what you're talking about, then they don't have to listen to it. Exactly. And and it's not like this podcast is your job where you're, like, getting sponsorships. I mean, that definitely would be great, right? Yeah. But, like, like, there are people who do podcasting as, like, that's their source of income. Yeah. Yeah. And if I get canceled... I mean, you're still going to keep doing it. Yeah, I'm still going to care. It doesn't matter. You just stop listening. (laughs) (laughs) And plus, like, unlike other people, I would have an open mind, you know? Like, I wouldn't be disrespectful Mm -hmm. or rude to someone who has a differing opinion. Exactly. Because I freaking hate that about some podcasts. Like, I stopped listening to some podcasts because of that. Yeah. Because they're just so rude. They're not even willing to listen or be open, like, they claim to be open-minded, but they don't even want to listen to the opposing side. And it's like, why are you even having this person on your podcast if you don't want to look? You yeah. try and understand, like, where they're coming yeah. from. Or at least hear them out on, like, what they yeah. have to say. Yeah, and you're just going to attack them. How bizarre. Right? I don't listen to very many podcasts, though, okay. so I've not experienced that myself. Yeah. But There's, like, some podcasts I just I can't listen to anymore because it's like they're not even willing to listen. How they're bizarre. Just, they're just there to trick them to get on. And they think you're going to listen, but really they're just there to attack you. To, like, force their beliefs and opinions yeah. on them. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's a belief. Totally. You know, it's not fact. It's just what you think is best for whatever, for right. you. Yeah. But no one truly knows what's best for the world. No. Yeah. Like, People- with all this political stuff, you know, everyone, th- it's a belief, a political belief. That's why it's called a political belief. No one truly knows except for, like, this, the higher power and what's really good or what's best for the country. I mean, people don't even pe- – people barely know what is best for themselves. Exactly. People barely know what is best for their family, let alone the entire country. Like, of what are we, like 330 million people or something like that? <gasps> oh, my God. Fun fact. Did you know that there are more people in the state of California than there, than there are in the entire country of Canada? Yeah. Isn't that mind-blowing? California is huge. Yeah. California has, like, I don't know what it is now, but it it was once, like, the third largest economy in the world. Yeah. And I don't know if that's still true or not. Like, the state of California is larger than, like... The East Coast. Almost the entirety of Europe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. I saw a TikTok <laughs> where, like, this guy... They, like, do, do they do the overlap? Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, here's another fun fact, is that I think I've talked to you about this before, but a large majority of Canada's population lives south of the U.S. border. Yeah. Because, like, if you think about Michigan, right, and the Great Lakes, yeah. and then, like, Buffalo, New York, and you have that dip, like, where Toronto is, yeah. like, most of Canada's population is, is in that area, and that area is, like, south. Yeah. That's because the rest of Canada is inhabitable. Like, it's just yeah. snow. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's a frozen tundra. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, California could be its own country, honestly. There's Girl, so many people It's about to here. get, like, split up into two countries. Or two states. If that happens, people have been trying to do that, that for, for so, so long. long. Yeah. I'm Ever like, since I can remember, that's been a thing. It makes sense, because California owns all the electoral votes. We probably should split it up. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like, whatever California wants, that's what's going to happen. Oh, thank God. Um. Yeah, I don't know. so fucking crazy. It is crazy. California is huge. It's too big for its own good. Yeah. There just, are yeah. a lot of people here. Yeah. And, and like, I've totally noticed, like, in the last five years, Sacramento is just, like... Pretty- yeah, because Sacramento used to be nice. Because it's a, it's a city... It used to be homey. Well, because, like, it's a you know, city, right? Yeah. It's a metropolitan city It's a capital. Yeah. But it's not nearly as big as um, San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And I remember, like, traffic used to be not that bad. Here, but now yeah. it's, like, insane. It's, like, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, I was just, like, trying to fucking, like, get to work the other morning. I'm, like, I feel like I'm in fucking L.A. right now. Like, this is insane. Mm-hmm. This is insane. Like, yeah, just a lot of people want to be here. And when are they going to stop working on 50? Never. <laughs> Short answer, never. Anybody from Sacramento can relate to, like, what we're talking about. (laughs) 
this freeway is just never going to finish. Like, I get irrationally angry thinking about 50 and just how unkept it is. Yeah. And how terrible it is. Yeah. It's so terrible. It's, uh, oh, it's bad. Like, when it rains, I just know there's a car accident. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't even try to go on the freeway when it rains. Just use back roads. And people here really are bad drivers. Yeah, we we're considered, like, the worst city in California for driving. Accidents. Yeah, car accidents. God. Something to be proud of. <laughs> it's weird because, like, I am a bad driver, but, like, I'm not. Because I don't get in accidents, and, like, that's the only thing that makes me, like, not a yeah. bad driver. I think people are just... I don't know. There's a lot of road rage. And everyone... I was just about to say, I'm a very aggressive driver. <laughs> Everyone's just always in a hurry, I think. You know? Yeah, totally. Like, it's definitely, like, a cultural thing here. Because mm-hmm. I have heard that in other places in the U.S., like, in the South or, like, um, like in the Midwest, like, nobody's in a hurry. Yeah. Like, nobody is in a hurry. Like, in Florida, no one is in a hurry to get anywhere. Yeah. Like, if you are going the speed limit, you're going too slow. Oh, here? Yeah, Yeah. for sure. And people get angry if you're going 65. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. (sighs) Yeah. I'm I'm definitely one of those people. Um, (laughs) So I am contributing to the problem, but am I going to change? No. No. Because if you're not driving at least 10 miles over the speed limit... Like, get the fuck out of my way. Yeah. Don't go in the fast lane either. Oh, my God. I can't. My, like, what really gets my goat is when there's two lanes. There's only two lanes, mm-hmm. which are most roads in Cal- here in Sacramento. Yeah. Um, and there's two people, and they're both going the same fucking speed. <laughs> or one's just going a little bit faster than the yeah. other one. And I'm like, like, what is happening right now? Yeah. Like, do you realize, like, what you're causing? <laughs> like, do you realize the the mental turmoil that you are doing to people yeah. by doing this? Like, yeah. And what's more fucked up is, like, people don't even realize that they're doing that. And people, I mean, I don't think this is special to Sacramento. <laughs> but, like, people get real angry on the road. Like, one time... Yeah. I think Brandon, I don't know if he, like, accidentally cut someone off or whatever happened. Like, I wasn't there. Yeah. But there was no accident, right? No accident, just maybe he cut... Because Brandon, you know, drives a truck and they have blind spots or whatever. Right, right. Um, And this guy, he was so angry that he stopped at the light, right? You know, they, they stopped at a red light. Yeah. And he got out of his car. And he was, like, legit about to fight Brandon. And Brandon's like... We didn't even get in a car accident. Like, I literally didn't even do anything to him. But he was just so angry. He was so ready to fight. But luckily, a, pl- a cop car came <gasps> came up, so he just went back into his car. <laughs> oh, my God. imagine like, what's going to happen? And, like, also, Brandon's strong, and he's got tools in his truck. Like, and he's he can, tall. He's at, like, hands, you know, arm's length to a hammer or a drill or, like, something, <laughs> you know? Something like, that could be used as a Yeah, weapon. don't mess with a construction worker. They'll no. probably beat you. Yes. <laughs> oh. So oh, I was my God. Just, people, they're just so angry. And what? what why is why? that? Why even get out of your car? Why, well, like, why are that? people so angry? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Do I don't think it's because it. they're unhappy with their life because they have really given into these societal, you graduate from high school, you go to college, you get a degree, you get a job, you find a wife, you buy a house, you have kids. I don't know. It's definitely personal. Like there's something going on and you're channeling that energy like to unnecessary things. Yeah. As in getting out of your car and trying to start a fight at a red light. Dude. Um, one thing I heard that's just always stuck with me is anger is a secondary emotion. So if you're angry, there's probably some underlying reason. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely, that guy definitely had something else going on. He must have a, like a bad day or something. Or a drug addiction. Oh yeah, that too. I always chalk it up to drugs. <laughs> when people be acting a fool, I'm like, that person's on drugs. <laughs> there's no other explanation. I mean, they could be. 
That's totally plausible. I mean, we are, like, fucking the meth capital of the U.S. Yeah. Like... Everybody does meth in California. Well, I mean, that's a bit of a generalization, but... No, I mean, like, in high school, there was a bunch of coke dealers. You know, just go down the street. That blows my mind. Yeah. Like, we were in high school. Mm -hmm. I never did it. Well, all the ones I know are either... They either die because they OD'd over their own supply or they're in jail. Exactly. Like, so, dodge the bullet. Oh, my God. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. There's drugs here everywhere. So, um. anyways. <laughs> so, um, to yeah. summarize. <laughs> to sum up. To sum it up. Emotional energy. Don't give your fuck bucks away mm-hmm. to things that don't matter. Yeah. And. It's finite. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's so trivial to get upset over X, Y, or Z. Yeah. Like. If it's not going to matter in in five minutes, don't. Mm-hmm. If it's not going to matter in five years, don't. If it's not going to matter in five months, don't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Just, like, let it go. Like, mm-hmm. easier said than done for sure. Yeah. You know? But, like, your life is limited. Your emotions are limited. Like, we, I mean... You could die tomorrow. Yeah. Is that how you want to spend your life? Like, we're recording this right now. It's 9-11. Like, those people didn't even know that was going to be the, their last day. They just went to work? Yeah. It was just another regular day. So, like, yeah. Save your fuck bucks and don't dwell on, like, stupid things. Don't yeah. get out of your car to start a fight. <laughs> Unless you wanted, unless you really do want today to be your last day. Exactly. (laughs) Oh my God. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. For having me. And this has been wonderful. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) I'm hungry now. Yeah, me too. What are we going to get for lunch? I don't know. But thanks for getting on the podcast. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoy what you hear and want to stay up to date on the show, please follow me on Facebook and on Instagram. You can also check out my website at thetalkativeintrovertpodcast.com. All the information will be on there as well as in the show notes. Please help support the show by sharing it with your friends and family. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you guys in the next episode.